Okay, Marv. Uh, thanks so much for uh, taking the time out for the interview. Uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, for so raspy. And uh, the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is that I actually uh, I recently watched a video from your YouTube channel uh, of you breaking down a, a battle tournament in uh, Alabama, going card by card. Okay. And uh, it, it really showed you know the passion and love you have for battle rap. You know, as a performer and as a fan. Um, how did your love of battles develop? Well, I guess it started basically because I wanted to be I wanted to be noticed and I couldn't play basketball. So the next best thing was you know, I I've, I've I've been blessed or I think that I'm pretty witty and uh you know, that was the that was the next best option. The next best option was battle rapping. Like I saw all of the all of the older kids in my neighborhood were were rapping and you know, all the kids in my school were rapping, and I thought that I was better than them. So I just kind of, I just kind of threw caution to the wind, and you know, kind of, kind of staked my claim, so to say. Oh, okay. So, so was that something that you were, you said that uh, you know you threw caution to the wind? Was that was that something you were really nervous about the first time you, you tried it out? Oh, definitely, definitely, because you're allowing because you're allowing someone to ridicule you. So, you know, if a person can point out the right imperfection, you know, and everybody laughs at you, that might that might destroy your reputation. Right. right. So. And, and that was actually something I was wondering about because uh, the, uh, the the video that I, I mentioned before. I mean, you were showing such a tremendous amount of respect for uh, you know so many of the rappers that you mentioned. Um, and I was wondering if you ever had a battle where it was difficult to come up with bars. Um, just because you respected somebody so much, uh, you know, that, that you felt like, oh, man, I don't want to say this about this person. You know what? Uh, actually, most of them. Actually, most of them. Most of the, yeah, most of the battles that I do now, maybe because I'm, maybe because I'm, I'm a little bit older and I'm not necessarily trying to prove myself or trying to gain some sort of fame or name. So, right. I, I, I ultimately respect everybody that, you know, I matched up against. So right. it's usually it's usually hard for me to write things now, but all it takes is all it takes is is one is, is one is, is is one comment is one wrong comment, and then you know I can find my inspiration to do it. Right, right. Oh, so so it's more you know kind of feeding off of of what they might say. Uh, yeah, definitely help you out. Definitely. Well. Uh, in addition to, to your battling, you obviously have your solo work. Uh, you're also a member of, you know, Fat Killers and also Twin Towers with Fat Father. Um, yes, sir. Do you, have solo, uh, do you have any solo or group projects coming up soon? Um, I am actually, I am in the process of, uh, of finishing my next solo, my next solo project. I'm going to call it Hagler. It's going to, you know, after Marvel is Marvin Hagler. Uh, it's going to be a seven-song EP. Um, I'm literally in the process of finishing that now. Um, then me and Mr. Porter are going to do an EP where he exclusively does all the where he exclusively does all the production and I do all the rapping. Uh, well, uh, I'm in the process of finishing up the Twin Towers project with me and Fat Father. Um, yeah, man, I, I got a lot going on right now, man. I'm I'm, I'm really I just talk, I just spoke to uh I just spoke to Knox down at eighty three C. Man, hopefully he and I can do a project in, uh, early next year. I'm working, man. That's, I'm, I don't want to be known as I don't want to be known as the battle rapper that makes music. I want to be known as the the rapper, you know what I'm saying, who knows how to battle. So right. Well, I actually did see. I don't know if this is for any of those projects you mentioned, but I saw you posted a clip of yourself uh, writing to a uh, beat from The Alchemist. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna, yeah, that's the last beat for. Uh, that's gonna be the last beat for uh, for this Hagler project. So I'm really excited. Oh. I'm really excited that we were able to uh, that we were able to connect finally. Cause Al is a good friend. Al is a good friend of mine. We just never we just never really had a had a capacity to work. And uh, I basically I basically called him and bullied him. And you know I was like, Yo, I need a beat right now. I'm on my way to your house. And you know that's basically how it, that, that's that's how it went down. So, so, and he was just like, "Oh, okay, yeah, sure, okay." I mean, there was, there was, I mean, there was some, there was some resistance. But I'm bigger than Al. What are you gonna do? 
Well, well, you, well you, you also, you also, uh, you, you produce, you produce yourself as well. You, you were a co-producer on D12's uh, track Pain from the Shady 15 album. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was it like working on that track? Well, you know what, man? I've been blessed. I've been blessed to be to be around a lot of incredible producers. I've been blessed. I've been blessed to to work with the Nine Porter. Like basically, you know, I've, I've been blessed to to basically learn at his feet for the past seven eight years. And uh, you know, uh, I have uh, I have an incredible team of producers. You know, Silent Riot back at home, uh, House Shoes, Magnetic, like all of these people, 13K team. So it's kind of like I couldn't get around all these people and not learn. So, like, you know, I, 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 do, I, do, I do okay in that area. But um, it was it was a complete honor to, to, to even have my name mentioned on a track with B12. You know what I'm saying? I grew up listening to them. They were, you know, huge inspirations for me. And just to be able to open up a CD and see my name in the same liner notes of them. It was a, it was a complete honor. I'm, I'm super glad. I'm super excited behind it. Oh, that's great. That's great. Um, are, are there some artists and producers that you, you hadn't worked with that you'd love to collaborate with? Um, I mean, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm still a student of the game. I'm still, a, I'm still a huge fan. So there are, there are tons of people that I would love to work with. Not necessarily even in, in just the hip hop genre, but there are a million people that I would love to work with. The list is, the list is too long for me to even begin. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I can understand. You wouldn't want to forget anybody. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I understand that. I don't want to mess up a lot of opportunity. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you right. didn't mention me. Right. Yeah, exactly. I, I get. I get. <laughs> um, so you might not want to answer this question either, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, this is one that I, I try to ask everybody. Uh, if, uh, if you could put a track together with whatever artist you wanted, you know anybody that could produce it, uh, not necessarily like a top five or anything like that, but just you know guys that were uh, that you feel would fit with you on a track. Um, who would you put together on that track? I would. Uh, I would have Mr. I would have Denon Porter produce it. I would have. Uh, I would have Jasmine Sullivan do the hook because I think her voice is incredible. Um, I would probably. Um, I would probably. Uh, the other MCs I would have on it would probably be Beanie Siegel. I'm a huge Beanie Siegel fan, and uh, and uh, and and probably uh, and probably Royce. I'm you know I'm, I'm I'm I try not to be biased when it comes to Royce, but you know I've been I've been blessed to see him grow over the years, and I don't think that there is anybody on the face of the planet right now rapping better than Royce the Five Nine. So I would love to do a song with, with Royce and Beanie. Oh, that'd be crazy. I'm, right? I'm a Philly guy, so so I I think I think you know Siegel is one of those guys to me that um, you know he's a really underrated type of guy and uh, yeah, Siegel's classic a, man. Yeah, yeah. I I mean Siegel, uh, and especially you know Philadelphia and Detroit. I think I think a lot of times they get overlooked in terms of the amount of talent that comes out of both cities. Oh um, yeah, def definitely. Uh, I, I mean, like just the the amount of talent in Detroit and. And the influence they've had, and the influence that I mean, at one time, what half of Rockefeller was from Philadelphia, you know? Right. And, yeah, that's uh, very true. Um, so, so that that would be definitely be an interesting track. Maybe, maybe when we, we put the, the the word out there with the interview, maybe the, uh, the birds will hear it, and maybe we can start moving. Maybe let's 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 pray to the music gods. <laughs> that sounds good, though. But. Uh, uh, since we're doing this interview for Jada Kiss's website, uh, I also have to ask a, a top five dead or alive question for you. Yeah. And I was wondering, what are your top five albums of all time? Hip hop. Uh, yeah, yeah, hip hop albums. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's typically hip hop. Top five hip hop albums of all time. Uh, I feel like you have to go. Um, I go uh, Jay Z Black album. Okay. I I go, uh, I go on Turkey Big, Ready to Die. I go, I go, uh, NWA Straight Outta Compton. Okay. I go Ice Cube. <laughs> Ice Cube is either, it's either Death Certificate or America's Most Wanted. So I'll probably go America's Most Wanted. Ice Cube, America's Most Wanted. And I'll go um, 
Smith and Wesson, The Shining. I loved all those albums. Oh, okay. That, that, that's a good one too. Definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah. Top five is good. We, we we can add the extra Ice Cube album in if you want. It can be a top six. Don't. They, yeah, 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 yeah. Those were good, those were good albums. There was one point. There was one point in time where Ice Cube was the best rapper on the face of the planet. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Nobody wants to talk about that. There was one point in time where Ice Cube was the scariest guy rapping. Well, well, let, let's talk about that. Then we, we we can talk about that. Yeah, man. Like right, like like right after he left NWA, and everybody and and nobody was expecting him to to be able to stand on his own. And then he went and got with the Bomb Squad. Man, he put he put out some incredible songs. He put out some incredible projects, like some really incredible projects. And it, it's, I, I think it kind of showed people that you know Dre wasn't the only musical genius in that group. Right. Because America, America's Most Wanted was classic. Kill It Will was classic. Like both of those were, both of those were were, were, were bomb squad projects. And then he did uh, Lethal Injection. He did Death Certificate. He did. He did uh, 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 Predator. I I loved every Ice Cube album up until like he became like the Don Mega, like when he started wearing that big hat. I didn't like that. Like when he like I didn't like Weeby Club and Ice Cube. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the, that's the one with the uh, DMX, right? Uh, the Weeby Club. Yeah, that, yeah, that's when I was like, ah, I was like, nah, Cube, you reaching? <laughs> yeah, that was what ninety eight or so, nine, ninety eight, ninety nine, something like that. Yeah, yeah, I was still, I, I, I was definitely still in high school when Weeby Club yeah. came out. And I wasn't. Oh, it wasn't my deal. Well, uh, I always like to ask this as well, and we kind of already got onto it with Ice Cube. But uh, is there uh, anything that I haven't asked you about that you really like to talk about? You know, whether it's a music project, uh, whether you know anything. You know, I, I like to. You know, if, if I didn't do my research well, I just want to make sure that there's you know nothing that I didn't miss uh, that, that you wanted to talk about. I want to talk about how. Um how very disappointed I am in my Detroit Lions, as always, but I will still be a fan and I will still support because I'm not a fair weather fan, okay? And I want everybody I want everybody out there that's taking pot shots at my Detroit Lions to know that I'm quite possible that your team sucked ass for a long time as well. Let's not act like the New England Patriots were always good because they weren't, and I want people to lay off my Lions. Okay. Well, what do you think about Matthew Stafford? Do you think he's the starting quarterback, or, or you know what, man? For for the longest time, I was his I was his biggest I was his biggest advocate. I was like, yo, man, it's not really Matt's fault, man. You know, yada yada yada, woo woo woo. But now, man, right now, it's it's really really difficult. It's really difficult for me to to go to bat for him right now, man. We're looking really really bad as a team, man. I'm looking really bad, and I know that I know that you know we have problems with our offensive line, and, and you know we can't really establish a running game. But as the leader of the team, man, I'm, and like at some point you have to stop making excuses. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like I feel like I've been making excuses for Matt damn near every year he's been here. So it's you know I'm, I think I'm at the end of my rope with Matt, honestly. Well, uh, I mean, he he definitely has had his chance. He's been in league what maybe six years, something like that. And then, uh, and, it, and it's not talent because he's obviously talented. He's right. he's he's talented up the wazoo, but he just can't get it done, man. And it's very as a fan, it's frustrating. Well, Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. We we got disconnected. Oh, okay. Well, I, I was just saying that uh, I, I you you definitely given Sam or I'm sorry, uh, Matt Stafford, you know, enough time because uh, I mentioned I was a Philly guy and, and in Philly they're already trying to get rid of Stafford. He's only been here, you know, four or five weeks of the season. Yeah. Who who y'all who's your quarterback? Sam Bradford. Yeah, Sam Bradford. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they got they got they got him from the Rams for, for polls over over the winter. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> well we got Chip, we got Chip Kelly the genius though. We got Chip Kelly the genius. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I guess, man. Now yeah, now I think this is the first year where the team will be like officially his, right? Like where he's like like where yeah, all the people, people. Oh. Yeah, yeah, all the people, all the people 
with all the people he wanted and things like that. Yeah, and he got rid of a lot of guys and, and, and all that. So, so right. yeah, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll see what he can do. We'll see if he's really a genius. All right, we'll see. Well, did, did I miss anything else other than the Lions? No, no, man, that's, that's pretty much it, man. That's pretty much okay. it, man. You know, well, yeah. I appreciate your time, man. Oh, man, well, we really appreciate you. We definitely appreciate you, uh, you know, being taking your time to interview so back to the time uh, to work, and, and we just wanted to definitely have you on the site uh, as part of this new interview Thanks. series that we're still That means a lot, man. Oh, and uh, I also want to say that uh, J.D. just put out the most underrated diss track of all time, and I listen to it constantly. Well, which one was that? That is Animal. The 50 Cent disc. Oh, okay. Okay. That was, and ooh, ooh. <laughs> that was, that was scary good, man. So, so that, maybe, maybe that could be your next battle, you and Jadakit. Oh, uh, man, I'm not, I'm not worthy, man. I'm not worthy. I just saw him break dancing, though, so that's, I might have some ammo. Uh, uh-oh. <laughs> so, so you, you, uh, so did I guess your mind working on it now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. I don't. I don't want to start anything. I. I don't want to get blamed for it. No, nah, man. I don't want. To. That man's a legend. I'm trying yeah, to get to where he is. Oh, that I, I. I see you well on your way with with the stuff that you mentioned. You you were working on and, and what you've already done so far and how you already established yourself in battle rap. And, and I, I definitely say you're on your way. Man, I appreciate that. I appreciate the love, man. Thank you.